things things have uh, changed, and and I think um, one of the main things that has changed is that people are actually looking at what I'm saying rather than uh, just getting their perception of me from one-liners in in the newspapers. And you know, people do themselves a great disservice, and they 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 basically disrespect themselves. If they make judgments about people and situations without actually checking it out. And I was talking to a journalist uh, this week who was interviewing me for a, a national newspaper, uh, a freelance, and uh, he'd uh, pitched the story to another newspaper and uh, the uh, commissioning editor had said, we're not having him in the paper, he's mentally ill. And of course, what that guy sitting in his little bubble knew about me was only what he'd heard in the same industry or from the same industry that he works in. So he's just had um, the same mantra for decades and he's believed it. And uh, what people are seeing now when they actually take the, uh, the trouble to see what, I, what I'm saying and how I'm saying it, and the evidence in the books that I have to support it, is hold on a minute, this is making more sense than what I, how I saw the world before. So this, this is, this is uh, uh, the, the process that's happening. And, you know, we've talked a couple of times, uh, Howard, since um, I started a, a world speaking tour in the summer of 2016. Mm -hmm. It's continuing now. I'm going to Dublin next week uh, or next Friday and then all across Europe and then across the UK before December. And... Um, I've never seen uh, anything like it. Uh, all over the world, literally, Australia, Europe, the Balkans, Scandinavia, America, Canada, people are starting to um, look at uh, concepts and information and possibilities that they would have waived away with a, uh, a, a wave of the hand before. But David, it's so not, a, not a completely changing. open door though, is it? Um, one of the last times that we talked, you were having trouble getting into Australia. They were not going to let you in. Clearly that problem resolved itself, but they have issues with you. Well, um, a number of people have issues with me uh, and, and, and in authority. And, and so here's a question, Howard, that these uh, people, oh, I say nutter, should actually ask themselves. Uh, why would authorities have a problem with a, uh, an apparent nutter who's talking nonsense from speaking in their country or entering their country? Why would they? And by the way, you know, you, 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 we're talking here about the response to me uh, by, by the media over the decades in, in Britain. But when I go to places, for instance, like Serbia or Slovakia or other countries, um, uh, in the Balkans and uh, uh, into Europe. I'm interviewed on, on their mainstream programs. I was in Belgrade being interviewed for 25 minutes, seriously, about world events on their main two main breakfast shows. Well, listen, I know this for a fact, and I see some of these videos on YouTube. The problem that you've got here, and perhaps other I don't have a problem. countries... Well, look, uh, Howard, oh, I don't oh, have a problem. All right, I don't well, have a problem. Well, I, the this, issue this is that you have here... Oh, all right. For something about you know a program called the unexplained this is a very very important point well, i don't have a problem i am putting out information that people will not hear in the mainstream um i don't have a problem because i don't care how people receive it i care about the fact that it's circulating so if, if people have a problem with me mm -hmm. I, I i say to them well you you've you've actually described it perfectly you have a problem with me. I have no problem with me. All right, let's so, park the word, so, so let's park it, the word problem and let's see the issue that maybe you have here. And just hear me out with this point. Okay. Is that you have um, a back catalogue. You have a history here. People go back to that interview with Terry Wogan that you did. The one that you did 20 years later was very different, we have to say. But they go back to that. They go back to you wearing shell suits. They go back to headlines saying, and I think, you know, I haven't got it with me right now, but wasn't there some claim that somebody around you or you had said that uh, you were the son or a son of god or something like that and and yeah. all of that stuff of course pollutes the way that you're seen now when you go to places where they don't have that background with you of course in this day and age where people have more sources coming into them 
and they might be a little more open-minded, you're going to get more of a hearing, I would have thought. Yeah, but you do have that background because it's all over the internet um, and, and, and people can, can, can access that stuff. But the, this is the question. Um, at that time you're talking about, which was a period of three months in 66 years of my life, I was going through a massive transformation. Um, it was like spending your life in a bubble. Uh, a bubble of perception, a bubble of possibility, a bubble of information. And there's a big backstory to it, how it came about. Um, and then someone burst the bubble. And for three months, I'm trying to, uh, um, I'm trying to, to cope and process this information that, that's hitting me from all angles on multiple levels. It's, it's a long story. It's a simple story, but it's a long story. Um, and, and so um, are people going to live, and again, this is not my problem, it's theirs. Are they going to live their entire life um, in a time warp? Are they, are they going to judge um, someone 66 years from three months? Well, if they are, they have a problem. I don't have a problem uh, with it at all because I don't care. But they have a problem because if their perception is that you judge a person for what happened 30 years ago uh, for three months against 66 years and all that I've said since and written since has been proved to be uh, true, then what the heck else are they um, perceiving in the world about world events, about people, about everything that is coming from the same myopia? And therefore, how can they possibly, from that uh, way of, of perceiving the world um, understand anything they can't and and you know um, that what is happening now um, is that people's perceptions of everything are being molded because from uh, perception comes all human behavior and, and human perception comes from information received so if you can control the information that people receive, you dictate their perceptions and therefore you dictate their behavior. And what we're seeing now is this incessant censorship um, in, in, in all um, areas, not least uh, through the internet giants in the devil's playground, Silicon Valley, that is dictating what people see and hear and thus what they perceive but, but and if people how were, they behave. If people were controlled in that way though, to, David. I'm, I'm trying to break yeah. that. And no, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. You know that you and I have spoken many times before, so I know which right. page you're on and you know we, we've been here before. But the fact of the matter is that people are going, and your, your shows, your um, speaking engagements, are pretty much a lot of the time sold out, maybe all of the time sold out, David. So right. you can't say that people are controlled to that extent because they're coming to see you. If they were totally controlled, they wouldn't be coming to see you. Oh, it's about numbers, mate. Um, if, if, um, if you could see the difference it makes in the way people start to, start to see the world in a different way, in a more expanded way, uh, when they have access to this information compared with when they don't, um, the more that this information circulates, this is, this is basically what's happened uh, to me. As the information has, has circulated as best I can, um, uh, nothing like it circulates when it goes through the mainstream. Um, the more um, people have, have, have changed their perception of me and changed their perception of the world. And if we had a, a mainstream media that would allow all information and perceptions and, if you like, uh, ways of looking at the world uh, to be circulated, then the world will be a very different place. But, you know, it's a very, very narrow band of possibility, what I call the postage stamp consensus, that, that the mainstream media overwhelmingly pour out and pound out to the world as news and information every day. And the vast majority of people don't get access to this other information. You look, you look at the education system. That's the postage stamp consensus version of the world that's given to children from the earliest age throughout their formative years. And if they don't repeat back what they've been told to believe in their exams, they don't pass. Well, we've you got know, to have some standards, though, David. Come on now. You know, you've got it. I mean, did you get your A-levels? Did You, you took A-levels, didn't you, David? I, I never. You did? Okay. 
Wait, wait a minute. I should have oh, researched that bit then. You didn't, no, you no, didn't take anything. No, no, you've, actually, you've, you've actually, by accident, um, introduced a very interesting point, a very important point. I left school at 15, you could in those days, um, to, um, to go and play uh, professional football. I never took, let alone passed, a major exam, apart from an end of year class exam, in my life. I did all my learning in my time, on my watch, um, on my terms. I've now written uh, something like 25 books. I talk um, for 10 hours uh, all day with no script. Um, and and um, I would have been considered at 15 an educational failure. This, this um, idea that you have to pass exams to, um, to, 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 to give a measure of your intelligence is absolute nonsense.